Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Velocity 2016 in Santa Clara. I'm here with Steve. Steve, how are you doing? Very good, how are you? Good, so you're the COO of Scientia? Scientia Mobile, that's correct. Okay, and you're co-founder as well. I am. And you guys do something around device intelligence, and that's can good. you unpack that a little bit? Because device intelligence sounds pretty interesting, but maybe means a lot of things. Sure. When we say device intelligence, we mean that um, we can detect the characteristics, capabilities, and properties of mobile devices, and we can sell that information uh, through an API to our customers who leverage it to make a substantive difference in their web performance, ad targeting, or analytics, mainly. So when I'm on my mobile phone yes. and I'm seeing an ad mm -hmm. that's popping up, it might be because you guys have optimized that experience for my device, or? It could very well be that the site, let's say you're on an e-commerce site. Mm -hmm. If they're trying to sell you something, it could be that their analytics, which uses our platform, has determined that uh, users of the same device as you have a higher propensity to buy the product that you're looking at, uh, or that you might be looking, you might intend to look at, and so they serve you an ad for that product proactively. Uh, and then they can go back and measure again to see how that ad targeting, which is done with our product, has resulted in more or less sales. Okay. And Does that make sense? Yes, but okay. so in a lot of cases, I notice when I'm on my web device, right? Sure. At my web device, whether it's an iPad or a phone, phone it's some sort of mobile device, sure. usually connected to a wireless uh, because it's cheaper or yep. sometimes quicker, yep. sometimes not, but sometimes quicker, mm -hmm. and yet, Responsive design web pages seem anything but responsive. Can you guys help with that? We can, yeah. I think it helps to understand, to take a step back and understand how responsive design came about. Uh, I think it's a bit of a misconception, this notion that responsive design solves the problem of a, of a bad user experience. I think it really solves the problem of a bad developer experience. But I, as both a developer and an executive, understand that uh, at the end of the day, I want my business to be effective and I, I really don't care if I have to pay my developers a little more to do that. So responsive design takes us a lot further than we've been in the past by consolidating all, consolidating all of our development into one code base, mm -hmm. and that's great for the developers, right. but it often results, as you suggested, in a slower web experience. Right, So you're loading uh, all the stuff for me that I may not really want. Loading. Well, I think today, the biggest problem in performance for responsive design is images, and I think that Aside from my solutions that we sell and our competitors sell, you're left uh, with three bad options. The first bad option is not doing anything about it at all, just serving the images as is. The second is lazy loading them. That is to say, load the whole page, determine how large of a space you have to fill, and request an image that's that size. Now, we've already waited for the whole page to load before we started loading the image. There's obviously a delay there. The third option is to use media queries in which uh, you load all the possible variants of the image you might want to serve and then show the one that's most applicable, uh, which has the problem of a heavy payload. So either you don't do anything at all, you load images too late, or you load too many images uh, and have a better looking experience. Now, right? how, do, how does <laughs> device intelligence help with that? It's a great question. So device intelligence helps because, uh, and, and we have released a product that demonstrates this called Image Engine. It, with device intelligence, you can receive the request for an image from the browser and we can proactively tell you how large uh, the screen size is, or perhaps with client hints, we can tell you how large of a space the browser has requested to fill, and then we can resize the image. Or you can use our device detection solution by itself to choose how large to make the image and then serve it back. And this happens in real time? Or yes. In, in even faster than real time? I mean, is there a... I don't think it can be faster than real time. Pre, it was a pre real time or something? <laughs> <laughs> um, or predictive it, or... Yeah. You could, pre we could predictively resize images and prime our cache so that when you come asking for them, they are already there. That is something that we do. But uh, but in general, this is a, is, is a response to the user's request. Uh, I guess it's sort of at the essence of responsive design. It's responsive images. So people in the responsive design community often say that they have the responses, responsive images problem. The solution to that problem that's most widely accepted is producing a set of assets that the browser can choose from. Uh, and then that, uh, so you have maybe four different variants of your image. The browser says, I have a two to one, I have a retina style display that has a resolution that's higher than is advertised. And I'm going to request the image that's most applicable for this screen. But um, you still need to go asking for that image from somewhere, so then it needs to be resized. And device intelligence allows you to avoid the need for multiple image variants and a big set of tags in HTML to describe them by uh, serving the image that is most appropriate for the browser the first time. And so, 
there, there are a million different devices and screens and resolutions yes. and all that out there. Mm -hmm. How do you guys quickly make that determination of what, what is the uh, device you're, you're optimizing for? There are two parts to it, really. There is the question of how do we even keep track of that many devices in the first place, which is through uh, big data analysis of billions of requests per month that we serve. Uh, and then we distill that down to a data file, which is called the Warful file. Doesn't really matter what it's called, but it contains the definition and a representative sample of every single uh, HTTP request from a given device. So we can we we put the minimum number of uh, sample user agent strings and HTTP requests into this data file, and we use an API to say how similar is this, or what is the most similar user agent string to the one we see from a incoming request, and does it contain any substantive information that might lead us to believe it is or is not the device it claims to be. This is a big problem. <laughs> so if, if, if people aren't using a service like yours, yes. and they're trying to do this on their own, homegrown, mm -hmm. yep. it's probably a lot of overhead, isn't it, to do that? It is. You, yeah. you, at the end of the day, it, it doesn't appear that the, the problem is even solvable, to be honest with you. If I, if I said to one of my clients, you know, why don't you just keep track of every mobile device in the whole world as they get released, and put them in a database, yeah. and then figure Optimize. out on the fly which one this new request uh, represents, Indeed, right. it's, a, it's a problem that can't be solved by a company. You're not going to put $5 million into uh, saving yourself $100,000 or $200,000 or even a million dollars, right? So I've already put that money in and uh, we do it as a service too. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So where, where do you see this whole device intelligence space going in the next 12 months? If mm -hmm. you could fast forward to next year, we had the same conversation. Sure. What do you think you're going to be at next year? What, what, what would be important to you folks? That's a good question. We've been doing this for a long time. Our company started as an open source project in 2001. All right? Over the past 15 years, uh, we've never been able to escape device fragmentation. Mm -hmm. The problem is always there. It always manifests itself. Somebody once told me, and they were exactly right, that this problem is not a technical problem to solve, this problem of fragmentation. Why is it that we have so many different standards? There isn't a technical, the, the technical solution is quite easy. The political solution is unsolvable. And so, uh, the, the economic drivers that drive innovation also drive fragmentation. And anytime one problem gets solved, another is created because companies need to innovate. And so they create problems that they can solve themselves and their competitors have to solve it in different ways. Right. So what do I think will happen in 18 months or 12 months with device intelligence? I think it'll still be here. I think there will be a need for analytics for at least a decade uh, in the back end that won't be easily solved in any other way. Uh, this problem has been, people have tried to solve this problem many ways and many times, but even inevitably, some large company that has a vested interest in their devices being represented gets involved, and then it only works well for them, and the other competitors stop using them. <laughs> and so it, it ends up, you almost need a de facto standard in the industry, which is what we are. Excellent. Uh, to solve that problem. Well, Steve, we look forward to your journey and Thank be you. a long part of it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, appreciate the talk. <laughs>